So previously for our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series, we've taken a look at a number of different themed pizzerias and animatronic characters. Each of these characters have had their own specific backstories and reasons for attacking the Night Guard. Night after night, our different guard characters have survived throughout all these attacks. All except one unfortunate Night Guard who met a mysterious end. This was the Night Guard of the Winter Wonderland Pizzeria. In fact, our story takes place right after the Winter Wonderland Pizzeria shut its doors for good. But the next location we'll be looking at isn't a pizzeria at all. With many locations scattered throughout the country, there's one facility that handles all the repairs and storage for all their animatronic characters. So the next location that we're introducing is the Fazbear Repair Center. This is a facility that handles all the repairs for Fazbear Entertainment. Through their doors, they've had a wide range of different characters that they've repaired and maintained. And then they send them back to their respective pizzerias. They've received every different kind of character you could think of. They've even had to work on the big old bear himself. But now since the Winter Wonderland has permanently shut down, the Fazbear Repair Center is now about to receive a whole bunch of new characters. Since these characters have been discontinued, they'll need to be assessed and put away in storage. But unknown to all the repair workers, they'll be receiving an extra special guest. It's been some time since we've seen this extra character. And since the end of the Winter Wonderland chapter, they've gone through some changes. After their plan was successful, they absorbed the poor Night Guard's body and soul and became something much darker and stronger. So the shipment had finally arrived, and today was the day that all the discontinued characters needed to be worked on. One by one they are sent through on the conveyor belt to be assessed and checked. First up we have Patrick the Polar Bear. He has some surface damage, but for the most part he is in quite good shape. He has some red stains around his chin, and much care needs to be taken around his jaw mechanism. It definitely has the potential to clamp down and cause serious damage. The repair worker then inspects all the other characters as they send them in one by one. Eventually they come to the Glitch Entity. No name is written down for this animatronic, and they don't seem to be on the list either. Where on earth has this strange looking thing come from? Regardless, they needed to be assessed and put away in storage. They have severe damage on their legs and arms, and their teeth are jagged and sharp. They seem to be stained with something that the worker doesn't even want to know about. Their extremities are covered in what looks to be slimy red wires. They seem to be a much older model than the rest. This thing gave the worker the creeps. They didn't want to know anything about it. They feared that there might be something inside that they didn't want to find. So after their quick look over, they sent this strange thing into storage. They arranged all the characters together in a storage container and locked them up for good. But little did the workers know what has now entered their repair center. And as we all know, the glitch entity wouldn't stay in this storage container for very long. With a whole factory filled with animatronic characters that they could corrupt, who knows what havoc the glitch entity would cause. Any new characters that get sent through those doors could be corrupted, and then sent back to their pizzeria with the glitch's influence. If the glitch entity took over the repair center, then any and every character would be theirs to take over. Slowly but surely, they would be able to control every character in the Fazbear Entertainment franchise. But their powers and abilities weren't that powerful yet. If they wanted their glitch power to spread throughout all the animatronics, they needed a few more human bodies and souls to consume. The workers at the repair center would do fine, but before the glitch entity can take their souls, they need to slowly work up their fear. Fear is what makes a human susceptible to being absorbed into their body. So slowly but surely, the glitch's plan would be put into action, but they're going to need a hand from their fellow animatronics as well. 
All of their Winter Wonderland slave puppets are securely locked away in the storage container. So even if the glitch entity took them over again, they wouldn't be able to free them from their container. So they would just have to wait until some new animatronic subjects would arrive. But now let's meet our playable characters we'll be looking at in this chapter. So in this chapter, there will be two playable characters. First we have the repair worker, and then the night guard. Throughout the day we play as the repair worker. Their gameplay segment consists of repairing damaged animatronics, and carefully replacing broken parts and trying not to get themselves gravely injured in the process. But considering there aren't any new characters to be repaired in this episode, we'll take a look at their gameplay segments in a later video. But now we come to the night guard. Some of you might ask why a repair centre would even need a security guard. Well considering that the facility is filled with thousands of expensive parts and equipment, the night guard needs to look out for anyone breaking in and trying to steal anything. But intruders aren't the only thing that they need to worry about. Just like any other pizzeria, the animatronics at the Fazbear Repair Centre tend to walk around and cause trouble as well. So it's up to the night guard to stay vigilant and keep an eye out. They have a security office just like any other guard, although it isn't as fancy as all the others. It has two doorways, multiple monitors, a large roller door, and a control panel to work all of the functions. This security office is located in the back dock area of the repair centre. Sometimes rogue animatronics would wander down towards the office. And the security guard would do their best to fend them off. But considering all those Winter Wonderland characters have been locked up, and there wasn't any new arrivals, tonight should be a pretty breezy shift. That is, until the night guard finds themselves in front of the glitch entity. So now let's get into the gameplay segment of the video. So as always, the gameplay segment is based on the classic FNAF formula of observation and management. The player needs to be vigilant and always keep an eye on the monitors. The glitch entity wouldn't have a starting position that the player can keep an eye on. They would simply have to keep an eye on all the different security cameras and notice which ones look a little off. When the players notice slight static on one of the screens, that would mean that the glitch entity is in that room. So back in the office, the player has control of both the left and right hand door. They can also control the roller door. But it will take a longer time to shut. Power consumption once again is also a major factor in this gameplay segment. Lights use a little amount of power, doors use an average amount of power, and the roller door takes up the most power. So players need to use the roller door when it's completely necessary. So the glitch entity can approach from the right and left hand side doors. As soon as the player sees them, they would need to shut the door immediately. In some cases, the glitch entity can trick out the player and warp to the opposite door. This could leave the player open to a jump scare if they aren't quick enough. The glitch entity can also give the player a mini psychological jump scare. These are harmless, but will leave the player in a fearful and dazed state. They'll start seeing double, and their movement will be inverted. Whilst this state wears off, the player will also be open to a jump scare if they're not careful. They need to be on high alert and move quickly. If they fail to do this, then they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So I think the return of the glitch entity is a great way to open this new chapter. Who knows what they've got in store for the player, and all the other characters that will come through the door of the repair center. And as to who or what the Glitch Entity's new minions will be, we'll have to wait and see. But until then, the Glitch Entity will be watching and waiting in the shadows. But now, for the next part of this chapter, we come to our next character. And the next character to come through those doors is Denver the Dragon. Denver the Dragon is definitely a unique character to say the least. For his design, he was modelled after the traditional fantasy medieval dragons. He was given multiple horns, pointy teeth, and even wings. He was one of the only few Fazbear animatronics we've seen to have wings. So Denver came from a mythical creature pizzeria that was located further upstate. 
He was considered to be the main character of this particular pizzeria. Not only was he a performer up on stage, but he also has a special inbuilt ability. So considering Denver is a dragon, it only made sense for him to have his own internal smoke machine. Whilst on stage, a smoke screen would rise out of his mouth. But unfortunately, one day, Denver had a terrible accident. There was a malfunction that caused him to blow way more smoke than he usually would. Through this thick cloud of smoke, hardly anyone could see. Unfortunately, a worker couldn't see what was in front of them and accidentally pushed Denver off the stage. He suffered quite a bit of damage and now has ended up at the Fazbear Repair Center. So as a repair worker assesses Denver, they can see a number of issues. Atop Denver's head, one of his horns has snapped and his wings have suffered some damage. There was bound to be some internal damage as well but the repair worker wouldn't know for sure until they opened him up later in the repair process. Speaking of the repair process, let's get into our first gameplay segment of the video. So, as we stated in our last video, the player will take the role of the repair worker. Their task is to repair and replace any damaged body parts of the animatronics. But this wouldn't be as easy as it sounds. As we all know, Fazbear animatronics can be quite finicky. The player will need to be extra careful and move slowly when performing these tasks. If they move too quickly and accidentally hit any of the delicate wires, then they can trigger a jump scare. The game would be over and the session would start again. So first up, the parts that need to be repaired on Denver are his torn wings and cracked horn. So the player would need to use the appropriate tools in order to fix Denver up and the first thing on the list was his wings. The frames of the wings were perfectly fine, so they would just need to cut out and replace the material. Next up is Denver's broken horn. The player would need to carefully extract the broken horn and replace it with a brand new one. But they would need to remember to be careful not to set them off and get attacked by the animatronics reflexes. And now it's time to check inside of Denver's inner workings. After safely removing his torso plate, he can see that his internal fog machine canisters are damaged and that's what's causing them to leak. These need to be replaced immediately. And lastly, Denver now needs to have an overall clean. A simple spray with soap and water and a bit of scrubbing should do the trick. And finally, just like that, Denver is now ready to be shipped back to his pizzeria. He will need to be processed and packaged away tomorrow. But for now, the repair worker heads home for the day. But little do they know that someone at the facility has other plans for Denver. The next day, when the repair worker returned to the factory, they couldn't believe what they saw. What on earth has happened to Denver? Who could have done something like this? All of their hard work was for nothing. Denver's body has been torn to shreds, and his head is completely changed. His mouth is filled with razor sharp teeth, and his horns have been changed to a dark charcoal color. His wings are even more damaged than they were before, and all of his fingers have turned into dark sharp claws. Whoever was behind this, the repair worker was going to get to the bottom of it. But for now, they were going to have to leave this mess until tomorrow and figure out what to do next. 
But now, as night falls on the Fazbear Repair Center, it's time for the Night Guard to start their shift and keep an eye out for any strange behavior. They've been instructed to keep an eye out for any intruders that may vandalize any of the animatronics. So as the Night Guard prepares for their shift, the new and improved Denver waits in the shadows. Now that he was under the control of the Glitch Entity, they would use them to strike fear into the Night Guard. Because the more fear a human has, the easier their body and soul would be to consume. And now it was Denver's turn to hunt down the Night Guard. So now let's get into the final gameplay segment of the video. As always, the gameplay loop is based on the classic FNAF formula of observation and management. So Denver's starting position would always be in the repair room. He would make his move at around 1 or 2 a.m. Denver had the ability to appear from both the right and left hand doors and also the large roller door at the end of the office. When the player sees Denver, they would need to shut the door immediately. Seeing that Denver's internal smoke machine is in perfect working order, he would utilize it and try to break into the office. When the player sees the smoke filling up all the doors, they need to be on high alert. Behind one of the doorways, Denver would be hiding behind the smoke. The player would need to find out which one he's hiding behind in order to close the correct door. They would need to look out for Denver's glowing eyes through the smoke. But if they close the incorrect door, then they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. And the newly delivered character is Ralph the Rat. Ralph is a friendly rodent character from a pizzeria based in New York City. His pizzeria is called the Rat Pack Pizzeria. The pizzeria's whole animatronic cast consisted of only rats. Each rat is a different shape, size, and color. Out of all the rats, Ralph was the main character. The Rat Pack Pizzeria has had quite a shady past, to say the least. The place is shrouded in rumors and urban legends. Apparently, there was a case where a rogue animatronic attacked a bunch of people. Most were badly injured, and one person sadly died. But it was never really made public, nor was it even proven to have happened. Fazbear Entertainment keeps hush-hush about this location, and a lot of the workers are encouraged not to talk about it. So Ralph was up for some minor repairs, nothing too serious. He needs his hands replaced, his loose eyeball fitted back into his socket, and his chipped tooth to be replaced. All of that was perfectly fine. The only thing the repair worker found strange was the note that came with Ralph when he was delivered. The crate that he came in was larger than most. When the workers opened it up, there was a note that was pinned to Ralph's body. It read, Enclosed are two rat animatronics. Rat 1, color gray. Rat 2, color brown. Gray rat is scheduled for standard repair and maintenance. Once fully repaired, Grey Rat is to be repackaged and sent back to Pizzeria of Origin. Brown Rat has been deemed irreparable. Brown Rat must be taken apart immediately. All loose parts must be destroyed. Highest priority, do not leave Brown Rat unattended. Do not operate on Brown Rat alone. Must work in pairs. One worker for observation, the other for dismantling. Please do not waste time. And do not underestimate the Brown Rat. The repair worker found this note to be quite strange. They've never gotten a note like this before. But the strangest thing of all is that there was only one rat in the crate. The only rat that arrived was Ralph. There didn't seem to be any other characters in the truck. The worker just assumed that the other rat would arrive the next day. So they didn't worry about it. Although they'd never had a case where the pizzeria wanted one of its characters destroyed. What was that about? Normally they would just salvage perfectly good parts but they were instructed to destroy it, so that's what they'll do when it eventually arrives. But for now, it's time to get working on Ralph. So the first thing that needs to be taken care of is his hands.
Next up is Ralph's loose dangling eyeball. And lastly, it was time to replace Ralph's chipped tooth. That was strange. The power must have cut out. Oh well, time to replace that tooth. Finally, the repair worker was done for the day. All they have to do is clean him tomorrow, and he'll be all ready to get shipped. It is strange though. That other rat never arrived. They should have been delivered by now. Even though it hasn't arrived yet, they still felt like something had been watching them from the shadows. Like it was already here. But that's crazy. They saw with their own eyes there was only one rat. Regardless, they couldn't shake this strange feeling. So before they left work, they thought they would have a chat to the delivery driver, just to see if they've seen anything arrive or seen anything out of the ordinary. The delivery driver mentioned nothing about a second rat arriving, nor have they seen anything strange going on. But for good measure, the repair worker asked them to check on the original packaging crate that Ralph came in. The delivery driver agreed that they would check it at the end of their shift. So at around 9pm, the driver was finishing up for the night. This was the time of night when no one else was around. All the repair workers have left by now, and the security guard would normally arrive around 11.30. So they eventually checked out the crate. There was nothing but a whole bunch of packing peanuts. So they scooped out all the peanuts and found the strangest thing. There was a hole in the back of the crate. How did no one notice this? It's almost like something chewed straight through the box. What on earth could have done this? Regardless, they would report it to the repair worker first thing in the morning. As they turn around and walk the other way, they get- <laughs> The next day, the repair worker returns to finish their work on Ralph. As they're doing their cleaning, they find something quite odd. On their body, tucked away, was a small tag. It read, Randall. Randall? Wait, so this character isn't Ralph? Then who's Ralph? Where were they? Enough was enough. Something strange was going on here. They've had this strange feeling ever since Randall slash Ralph had arrived. The repair worker was going to call the Rat Pack Pizzeria and find out what on earth was going on. As they walk towards the door, out of nowhere, the real Ralph jumps out and attacks them. The repair worker gets out of the way just in time and quickly hides in one of the lockers. They look out through the lock events and try to get a better look at this horrible creature that just attacked them. As they do, they finally get a look at this monstrosity. How on earth did they sneak in here? They must have arrived in the same crate. But somehow they snuck around all the workers. That note wasn't kidding. This thing needed to be destroyed immediately. And they realised why this thing couldn't be left alone. All of a sudden, the repair worker hears a strange sound. Ralph has bent the metal on the locker and locked the worker inside. Ralph will be back for them once they've taken care of the night guard. So for hours on end, the worker was stuck inside the locker. Midnight finally rolled around and the night guard was about to start their shift. But little did they know that Ralph would be waiting just around the corner. He had an appetite that couldn't be stopped. Devouring the delivery driver wasn't enough. He hungered for more. So now let's get into the gameplay segment of the video. As always, the gameplay loop is based on the classic FNAF formula of observation and management. So Ralph's starting point would be in the lunchroom. He could move at any time throughout the night. The player would need to be extra careful when it came to Ralph. He would always approach from the right hand door and also the roller door. When the player sees him, they would need to shut the door immediately. Sometimes it wouldn't be Ralph that was at the door. Instead, it would be Randall who was wandering around. For the most part, Randall was considered to be harmless. He was just curious and wanted to roam around. The player still couldn't let him inside the office, as he would get too close and block the player's view. As the night goes on, Ralph would get faster and faster. And his patience would start to get thinner and thinner. As the hours roll by, the night guard fends off all of Ralph's attempts to enter the security office. Eventually, before they know it, 6am rolls around and the night would be over. 
there doesn't seem to be any sign of Ralph anymore, so hopefully it was safe to exit the building and return home. As they walk down the corridor, they can almost see the exit. Just a little further and they would be free. What just happened? As the night guard looks over, it was the repair worker. They finally found a way out of that locker and saved their life just in the nick of time. The screwdriver that was embedded in Ralph's robotic skull could only hold them over for a little while. Who knows when this thing would get up and start walking again? The repair worker needed to end this tonight. As per the note's instructions, they needed to be destroyed. The night guard and the repair worker took Ralph over to the shredder in the back dock. This machine was used for destroying broken parts and outdated endoskeleton pieces, but shredding Ralph's entire body shouldn't be an issue. They lowered Ralph's body into the shredder as they both said goodbye to this deranged animatronic once and for all. Hopefully this would be the end of the horrible nightmare that was happening at the Fazbear Repair Center, but little did they know, it was just the beginning. And this new character is Boris the Baboon. Boris is designed after the wild safari animal, the Baboon. Keen-eyed viewers will notice that Boris actually has the face of a mandrel, but the pizzeria decided just to mix the two together since no one would really notice. So as it was stated just before, Boris was from a safari pizzeria halfway across the country. This pizzeria is commonly mistaken with the classic jungle pizzeria but they are two completely different franchises. Some of the characters might be similar, but they are very different nonetheless. So Boris was considered to be one of the secondary characters at the pizzeria. He wasn't a main stage performer, but instead he was another entertainer of a different kind. He has his own sectioned off area, just like the familiar fox we all know. So Boris has been sent in for some minor repairs to their arm. He needs the material replaced and a general cleaning. That should be easy enough to do. And hopefully our repair worker will have an easy shift as well. Well, they could only hope. So as they get Boris into the repair room, they get ready to do the repairs. The only thing is, Boris is a little bit jumpier than most animatronics they've worked on. Whilst the player is repairing his arm, they need to be extra careful and work slowly. If they move too quickly, Boris will stand up. The next move after he stands up will be a jump scare. So in order to set Boris back into his crouching position, the player needs to shock them with the inbuilt electro rod that hangs from the ceiling but the player can only shock Boris three times. Any more than that, and they'll do permanent damage to Boris's internals. So the only option is to go slow and steady. After all the material has been replaced, Boris now just needs a clean. and just like that he was all ready to get shipped back to his own pizzeria. But after the strange instances that have been happening over the last few days, the repair worker didn't want to take any chances. They decided to box Boris up and have them ready to go for tomorrow. If he was secured inside his wooden crate, then nothing weird could happen to him, right? Well, at least the repair worker thought so. So after he was secured away in the loading dock, the repair worker left for the day and hoped nothing bizarre would happen to Boris. But little did they know, someone else had a different plan for him. The glitch entity waited for the perfect time to strike, and they did as such. How dare that foolish repair worker think that this feeble wooden box would be enough to stop them. Nothing would stop them from achieving their ultimate goal. Nothing can hide from their influence. The next day, the repair worker was shocked to see that the crate has been burst right open. Where was Boris? They were nowhere to be seen. All the worker thought to themselves was how much trouble they would be in if they didn't find him soon. Who knows where he was, and what's worse, 
Who knows what he looks like now? While searching for Boris, the repair worker also couldn't get one thing off their mind. Alongside Boris, someone else was missing as well. Where was the delivery driver? They haven't shown up for work yet. And the last thing the repair worker remembers doing is telling them to check out the weird crate those rats came in. Ever since then, they haven't seen them again. Hopefully nothing bad has happened to them. So after a whole day of searching, they came up empty handed. Their shift was almost over and they needed to go home. The least they could do is let the night guard know before they start their shift and tell them to keep an eye out for Boris. Surely they would turn up at night, or the characters eventually do. So with that, it was up to the night guard to keep an eye out and stay vigilant. But who knows when Boris would strike next? That was solely up to him and when he wanted to make the most of his frightening new form. So now let's get into the final gameplay segment of the video. As always, the gameplay loop is based on the classic FNAF formula of observation and management. So Boris's starting position would be inside the back dock, but the player would never have a clear view of him. They would have to focus and look out for his shadow on the ground. Boris can approach the security office at any time he wishes. When the player no longer sees the shadow on the ground, that's when they would know he would be making his move. Boris would only approach from the left hand side door. When the player sees him, they would need to shut the door immediately. As the night goes on, Boris would get faster and faster. If the player isn't careful, he can well and truly get the jump on them. One thing the player would definitely have to look out for is when Boris goes into his primate rage state. This is a state where his eyes would glow bright red and he would be quite difficult to deal with. He would appear multiple times in one appearance and keep faking out the player to if they were really gone or not. Some of these instances can last quite a while. It just depends if the player is lucky enough to get past without Boris bothering them too much. If they slip up and let him into the office, then they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So the next character we're introducing is Billy the Bat. Hence the name, Billy was designed after the flying nocturnal animal, the Bat. He was given a dark grey colour scheme with unique looking arms and bat wings. It was never made clear exactly what species of bat he was specifically, but the fans were always divided on whether Billy was a vampire bat or not. In the end, Billy's pizzeria never gave the fans an answer. Speaking of his pizzeria, Billy came from a cave-finged pizzeria in the snowy mountain region of the country. The pizzeria was designed to look like a magical mountain cave, with a number of different characters to fit the theme as well, and one of the most popular characters was Billy. Billy performed up on stage with the rest of the band. His role was that of the backup singer. The pizzeria had a special hoist pulley system that would hang Billy upside down just like a real bat and whilst he was in this position, he would sing for all the guests. But on one unfortunate day, the pulley system broke and Billy took a nasty fall. For the most part, Billy was okay. Externally, he didn't get banged up too bad. What really took the most damage was his internal hardware. So he needed to be sent away to the repair center to get fixed up and to get back to his normal self. The only thing is, Billy hasn't been repaired or maintained ever before. Ever since the pizzeria got him, they've never had any issues with him. They know that he was an older model, but that was it. But little do the repair workers know what dangers lie deep inside Billy's robotic body. That's because Billy was built for a different purpose. He didn't even realize what he was capable of yet, but all it would take is a sinister presence to unlock what lies within. So when it came time to repair Billy, the workers couldn't get to him straight away. Unfortunately, they had other repair jobs in front of him. So Billy would have to wait in the holding room until the next day. But Billy, being unguarded overnight, would be plenty of time for the glitch entity to get to work corrupting his body 
and unlocking what lies within. So the next day rolls around and it's finally time for Billy to receive his repairs. And what the repair worker sees is shocking to say the least. They can't believe it's happened again. Someone has broken in and torn poor Billy's body all apart. His leg material was all shredded and his wings were ripped as well. The repair worker starts to think to themselves if this lazy night guard is even doing their job. They're probably slacking off while some crazy person has broken in and vandalised poor Billy. Regardless, they need to get their work done, so there's no point in complaining. The first thing they need to do is run an internal diagnostic and see what's wrong with Billy's electronics. There's always a port in the back of the animatronics. They just need to find it and plug in. Ah, there it is. Hmm, that's strange. This sticker is peeling off. They normally don't use stickers. They usually stamp the manufacturer's logo instead. The worker peels off the sticker to reveal something else. It reads, Afton Robotics. Wow, this thing is really old. They didn't come across many models this old anymore, especially with all the horrible rumours surrounding Mr. Afton and what went down at the original pizzeria. Regardless, they plugged it in and ran the test. All seemed to be running fine until they heard a click. That's strange, Billy's faceplate has opened up. They didn't know it could do that. As the repair worker goes to shut the faceplate, something truly horrifying happens right in front of their eyes. Billy's chest cavity opens up and all of a sudden four deadly blades burst out. They narrowly miss the repair worker as they take cover and hide behind a desk. Terrified, they stare at this deranged looking animatronic. What was this thing? This wasn't designed to entertain children, it was designed to murder them. The rumours were true. The worker has heard of another animatronic just like this, an animatronic that was rigged to be a deadly trap. It was at another location. It was a clown character they remembered, Circus something. They never thought these twisted creations actually existed. They needed to quickly warn the other workers and more importantly, the night guard. As they rush towards the door, they suddenly see a flash of light. What just happened? Were they teleported to the underground basement? Regardless of how they got here, they need to find a way out of here. They need to warn all the others. But without any keys, getting out of here would be quite difficult. The glitch entity couldn't have that pesky worker warning everyone else about Billy. It took a lot out of them to teleport the worker and they needed to retreat and recover. But they can leave it up to Billy to do the rest. They were counting on him to do what he was designed to do. His creator would be more than happy to see that Billy was finally being put to use. And their first victim would be the Night Guard. So now let's get into the gameplay segment of the video. As always, the gameplay loop is based on the classic FNAF formula of observation and management. So Billy's starting position would always be in the repair room, but he wouldn't always make himself very visible to the player. The player needs to keep an eye out for Billy, especially around the ceiling. Billy would tend to hang from the ceiling just like a typical bat would. When it comes to the office, Billy would be able to approach from the right hand door and the roller door. As soon as the player sees Billy, they would need to shut the door immediately. But the player still needs to be careful. Sometimes Billy can still be there, but he's just hanging from the ceiling. Whenever the player sees Billy with his deadly blades retracted, they would need to be on high alert. Billy can use these blades to enter the office. He would be able to attack the doors and damage them. The doors would be rendered useless for a short while until they kick back in and operate correctly once more. The player would need to do their best to keep on top of Billy's advancements towards the office because if they slip up and let him inside, then they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So the new characters we're introducing are the Possum Party. The Possum Party are a group of three brightly coloured possums. There's Pinky, Blue and Violet and all three of them make up the Possum Party. So funny enough, this trio of animatronics actually comes from the same pizzeria as Billy. The Possum Party was a part of all the nocturnal animals that occupied that pizzeria. 
They were a funny cast of characters that would bring presents to party guests and also hand out candy throughout the day. But they also had a role up on stage as well. The endoskeleton design of the possum party was quite flexible and nimble. They were able to do a number of different acrobatic moves while up on stage. The most impressive move they could do is hang upside down with their tails. This always entertained the guests the most. And it also leads itself to the actual animal the possum as well, considering that they are known to hang from their tails out in the wild. The possum party were always considered to be well behaved animatronics. But their curiosity would always land them in a world of trouble. And this time they've gone too far. The night guard who works at the pizzeria has claimed that the possum party has tried to attack them. But no one believed them. The possum party were completely harmless. Well that's what the manager thought. But regardless, the possum party's latest stunt has landed them at the repair centre. They were in need of major repairs, but the repair worker was nowhere to be seen. No one knew where they were. Unknown to all the others, the repair worker was teleported to the underground storage facility by the glitch entity. They've been trapped there ever since, and the entrance leading to the stairs was locked and they didn't have their keys. So if the repair worker was ever going to get out of here, they would need someone to come downstairs. So considering there was no one available to repair the possum party, Pinky, Blue and Violet would bring the party to them. They snuck towards the underground storage area where the repair worker was trapped. They located the entrance and made their way downstairs. The repair worker hears the door open up. Finally, they were free. They just need to make their way upstairs and get out of here. But they also realised something was down here with them. They grabbed their flashlight and made their way to the stairs. The only thing between them and the exit is the possums. So now we come to our first gameplay segment of the video. The player needs to navigate their way through the underground area, being careful to avoid the possums. Since this area is quite dark, the player needs to use their flashlight to navigate through this area. But whenever they see the troublesome little possums, they need to use the brightest setting on the flashlight in order to stun them. Their little eyes can't handle the intense light. But the player also needs to be careful not to waste the battery. As they get closer and closer to the exit, the possum party would get faster and faster. If the player isn't quick enough to blind them with the flashlight, it would be an instant jump scare. Finally, they reach the stairs. They quickly make their exit to go warn the night guard of what's to come. But unfortunately, they forgot to lock the door, leaving the possum party to wreak havoc on all the other unsuspecting workers. The possums loved it here at the repair centre. They didn't want to leave. Finally, they had a home where they could act as mischievous and evil as they wanted. There was no more children that they needed to impress and make smile. Just unsuspecting workers that they could terrorise as much as they wanted. Finally, they were able to be themselves. And they were excited to terrorise one more worker that they hadn't before. The Night Guard. They wondered if this night guard was going to be as fun as their other guard back at the pizzeria. There was only one way to find out. They had to put them to the test. Hopefully they would last longer than the other night guard that they used to play with. Meanwhile, later that night, the repair worker managed to warn the night guard. They handed them the flashlight and told them about the possum's sensitivity to bright lights. Hopefully this would help them survive the night. Speaking of the night, let's get into the final gameplay segment of the video. As always, the gameplay loop is based on the classic FNAF formula of observation and management. So, the starting position of the possum party would always be in the break room. They wouldn't always move as a group. Sometimes Pinky wouldn't be there, sometimes Blue, or Violet would be missing as well. Basically, the absence of one of the characters meant that they were on their way to the security office. So, the possums can enter from all three doors at the security office. The player can easily close the doors on them, but if each door is occupied, the player can use the flashlight instead to save on electricity. 
but the doors weren't the only way in which the possums would make their entry. On the ceiling above the player's desk was a loose panel. This is where Violet would try to make her entry and hang from the ceiling. The player would need to use the flashlight and try to stun her and send her back up. But they couldn't use the flashlight so quickly. They needed to wait until Violet's eyes were visible. Then they could blind her and she'd retreat. The player would need to stay on top of all the possum's efforts to enter the security office. If the player gets overwhelmed and can't keep up, then they'll be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. And this character was quite the special one. So the next character we're introducing is Santa Freddy. Santa Freddy is designed after the famous bear himself, Freddy Fazbear. In fact, all of his animatronic friends back at his pizzeria were based on the original cast. There was a Bonnie, a Chica, and a Foxy as well. But the difference was, they were all Christmas themed. Now of course, these weren't the original animatronics. These were just lookalikes for a specialty Christmas pizzeria. Although the workers have said they tend to have the same mannerisms as the original cast. So this pizzeria was called the Christmas Kingdom Pizzeria. So this was a specialty pizzeria that was only open from November to the end of December. It was completely Christmas themed with all the Fazbear gang dressed up in Christmas attire. And out of all these characters, the most popular of course was Santa Freddy. All the guests love Santa Freddy. They would even take photos of all the children as they sat on his lap and told Santa Freddy what they wanted for Christmas. But as of late, Santa Freddy has been looking worse for wear. His fabric skin was all worn and dirty, and his mouth would stay in the open position, leaving a creepy look on his face. The children were starting to fear Santa Freddy, and some of the younger children would cry and refuse to sit on his lap. So the time had come to send Santa Freddy to the repair center to get freshened up and restored to his original jolly self. So on that day, the repair worker found Santa Freddy's delivery crate in the back dock. Another animatronic sent in for repair? They didn't even know this was coming in today. How are these even arriving at the repair center? They haven't seen the delivery driver in days. It's almost like they disappeared into thin air. And it was almost like these animatronics were just appearing out of nowhere. But despite all the crazy things that were happening at the repair center, they still had a job to do. So they hauled Santa Freddy into the repair room and got ready to get to work. The first thing that needed to be done was to replace those eyes. They looked a little faded in color and could use a replacement. So the player needs to carefully remove Santa Freddy's eyes. Okay, so now that's done, it's time to fix that jaw mechanism. The pizzeria complained about the jaw being stuck in the open position, so all that needed to be done was to adjust the mechanism in the back. But just as the repair worker does this... Hmm, the power must have shut down. Not to worry, it should be back up in no time. What on earth happened? Where did he go? He was just here and now he's gone. The repair worker had finally had enough. They didn't even care anymore. Too many strange and bizarre things were happening in this place and they didn't want a part of it anymore. They know that if they go and try and find him, they'll just endanger themselves even more. Especially after they were trapped underground with the possum party. They didn't want to get into any more danger. So they packed up all their things and went home for the day. As they made their way through the back, something unexpected happens. All of a sudden, the delivery truck comes sliding out of nowhere. It's been completely flipped over and it's now blocking the exit. What could have done this? Immediately after, that question is answered. What has happened to Santa Freddy? Why did they look like this monstrous beast? They didn't have time to find out why as the Nightmare Santa starts moving towards them. The repair worker quickly runs down the hallway to get away from this abomination of an animatronic. 
they quickly lock themselves inside the break room and try to hide. They should be safe here, or so they thought. <laughs> Nightmare Santa comes crashing through the doorway of the lunchroom. The repair worker hides as they see this monstrosity search for them. If they just stay quiet and still for long enough, surely Nightmare Santa Freddy would move on. After a little while, that's exactly what he did. He grew tired of searching for the repair worker and decided to move on to the night guard instead. Finally, the repair worker was safe for now, but the night guard was definitely about to be in danger once again. So now let's get into the gameplay segment of the video. As always, the gameplay loop is based on the classic FNAF formula of observation and management. So Nightmare Santa Freddy wouldn't have a starting position on the cameras. He would always be waiting in and around the security office. The only way the player would be able to know if Santa Freddy is nearby is by listening out for his Christmas theme. This would alert the player that he's close by and is about to enter through any of the doors. Once the player sees him, they would need to close the door immediately. But sometimes if the player isn't quick enough to close the door, Santa Freddy can use his immense strength to hold the door open. The player needs to repeatedly open and shut the door to slam down on his hands. Eventually, Santa Freddy will let go and the player can close the door. Sometimes, Santa Freddy will approach the door but not play his Christmas theme. Sometimes, he will just be waiting in the darkness. The player would know when he's about to strike when they see his glowing red eyes. On some rare occasions, also when the player sees the nightmarish Santa Freddy in the doorway with no eyes, they wouldn't need to panic. But this, they would soon realize that this wouldn't be an attempt to enter the office. Soon, Santa Freddy would just be staring at the player and then disappear. But most players wouldn't realize this and close the door anyways, essentially wasting the power. But the player would need to keep up with all these attempts to enter the office. Because if they don't, they'll get greeted by a classic FNAF jump scare. So it's been quite a while since we've visited the Fazbear Repair Center. Much has changed since you've all been gone. The Repair Center has finally been taken over by the Glitch Entity. They've seized control of all the animatronics and completely locked down the facility. All the exits have been sealed shut and no one is allowed in or out. This means that our two main protagonists have been trapped inside the facility for quite some time. The Repair Worker and the Night Guard have been trapped for multiple days now. So far, they haven't been able to escape. They are currently held up in the security office. They've managed to survive on all the drinks and food from the vending machines in the break room. As for keeping all the animatronics out of the security office, the night guard has managed to override the doors to buy them some time. But they both need to take shifts when the doors reactivate. This is due to the glitch entity taking over the control center of the facility. They control almost everything and almost every character. Out of all the characters at the facility, there was one who seemed a little different. And that character was Randall the Rat. For some reason, they were able to resist the glitch's influence. They seemed to have a mind of their own. The repair worker has been observing them through the security camera, and he pretty much just wanders around the facility. This gave the worker an idea. Maybe they could use Randall to take control of the repair center once again. If they could only capture them and work on them in the repair room, they might gain control of Randall. Then they could overthrow this horrible creature that was keeping them prisoner. So the repair worker decides to make a break for the repair room, but they'll need the help of the night guard. On the way to the repair room is a long corridor, and all throughout the corridor are the characters that are under the glitch's control. All these models are sensitive to bright flashes of light, when exposed to a sudden flash, they can get overloaded and stunned for a little while. So it's the night guard's job to control the lights while the repair worker makes a break for it. So in this gameplay segment, the player will take control of the night guard. So they need to pay attention to the security cameras and watch out for any of the characters that could sneak up on the repair worker. When they spot a character, they need to overload the lights above to cause them to make a bright flash. This will stun them and give the repair worker some time to move. This surge of sudden electricity shouldn't be enough to alert the glitch. They're currently tapped into the power grid, but they won't think anything of it. 
So once the night guard has given the worker a clear path, they find themselves in the back dock. There's one thing they need to get before they go to the repair room. They open up the shredding machine that they use to dispose of the evil rat character, Ralph. They check the contents of the shredder and sure enough, there it is. The inhibitor chip. With this they'll be able to take control of Randall and they can use him to take on the glitch entity. So they make their way back to the repair room and craft a new device called the inhibitor. With this they'll be able to take control of any animatronic that wasn't under the glitch's influence. The glitch's hold on them was far too strong to override. But with Randall, they have a fighting chance. And as luck would have it, Randall was already in the repair room. So the worker tests out the inhibitor to see if they can gain control of him. And sure enough, it works. They then instruct them to destroy the glitch entity. The glitch won't see this coming. The last thing they would expect is a fellow animatronic attacking them. Hopefully this would be enough to stop their control of the facility and finally set the worker and guard free. The worker returns to the security office as they both watch Randall approach the control room. This was it. This was their only chance to gain control of the facility once again. Randall makes his way into the control room and seems unnoticed by the glitch entity. They were far too busy concentrating on tapping into the mainframe and hacking into every Fazbear establishment all over the country. Soon enough, every Fazbear pizzeria would be under their influence and control. But not if Randall has anything to say about it. They sneak up behind them and stab their sharp claws right through the glitch's chest. The glitch entity awakes and immediately counterattacks. One of their tendrils stabs straight into Randall's head. The tendril overrides Randall and quickly corrupts them. Sadly, the workers have now lost their only robotic ally. Randall was now another one of the Glitch Entity's disturbing creatures. The Glitch Entity immobilizes all their animatronic puppets and stations them outside of the control room. There was no way the workers were ever going to take back the control room now. That's it, they were doomed. There was no other option for them. The Glitch Entity would take full control. And when they were done with their nefarious task, they would eventually come after the workers and finish them off. As they both stood there in despair, they tried to think of a way out of this. How on earth are they going to take on the Glitch's small army? They were totally outnumbered. As the two workers finally accepted defeat, the repair worker had an idea. They weren't too sure if it would work, but it was their only option. They quickly rush out of the security office and make their way to the animatronic storage area. There were still some characters that the Glitch entity hasn't taken control of yet. In fact, they probably forgot all about them. The worker opens the container and activates the inhibitor. Here goes nothing. And suddenly, all of their eyes light up. Finally, it was time for the glitch entity to meet their old friends once again. The Winter Wonderland crew are given their directive to make their way to the control office and destroy the glitch entity once and for all. But the only thing standing between them and the glitch entity is their newly controlled servants. The only way they were getting to the glitch entity was through them. So, that's exactly what happened. So after all was said and done, the remaining characters stood victorious. Moments after the deadly battle was done, the glitch entity arrived. In one foul swoop, they destroyed all who remained. Multiple tendrils manifested out of nowhere and destroyed each and every one of them. The glitch entity has had enough. And this ends now. They glitched over to the repair worker in the storage area. They returned the favor and stabbed their deadly sharp claws straight through them. The worker drops to the ground as the glitch entity makes their way to the night guard. Laying there defeated, 
the repair worker has run out of options. There was nothing that they could do, and now the night guard was going to suffer the same fate as them. As they lay there in searing pain, one last fleeting thought enters their mind. What if? What if they used him? Would he even be functional anymore? They received this character a long time ago, even before the repair worker started this job. They had nothing to lose. If they were going to protect the night guard, they would need to unleash him now. They crawl over to the container and open it. They activate the inhibitor and wait to see what happens. Standing in front of the night guard was the glitch entity. They stood over them as they get ready to deliver the final blow. The glitch entity won't have their plans foiled by a bunch of lowly Fazbear employees. The fact that they thought they could even take on the likes of the glitch entity is pathetic indeed. The glitch entity will enjoy this very much, and when the night guard is finally no more, then Fazbear Entertainment will be under their control. Every single pizzeria will be filled with the glitch's influence, and they can do as they please. No worker or child will be safe from their tyranny. As they go to attack, they hear a sound. It sounded like large, heavy footsteps approaching them. Then, all of a sudden, Lester the Lizard has taken a large bite out of the Glitch's head. As their jaws latch on and get tighter and tighter, Lester rips the Glitch's head clean off. Lester crushes their head in their powerful jaws. Now that the Glitch Entity's mask has been destroyed once and for all, they were now simply nothing. The body that stands there is just a hunk of metal and parts. The lifeless animatronic body falls to the ground in a large FUD. Finally, it was over. The Glitch Entity was no more. The Night Guard walks past Lester as they stand there and continue to chew on his defeated enemy. The Guard helps up the repair worker from the storage area, and together they walk out of the repair center. Finally, this chapter in Fazbear Entertainment's dark history has come to a close.